Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. We're going to be having fun tonight talking about ribbit planes. Um, yes, this, it's one of those things where there's a thousand ways to say it. We'll be talking about that as well. Uh, there are a lot of interesting things on these that I've been getting a few questions about, but one person actually asked today, or a couple days ago, uh, what are all the differences and how do you go about knowing which one to use for which job? So we're going to uh, cover a lot of that information today. Uh, but we got a, a few things going on. I don't think there's anything on Sarah's bench this week. Um, it's been a, a busy time. Yes. Yeah, so some, some, for some reason. <laughs> there lots of things going on at the hospital right now. I'm actually thankful she's here. And uh, that may not be next week, but we'll find out. <laughs> um yeah, and uh, for those of you wanting to know, the solar panels did get on the house. Um, however, we had a big storm came through with a massive amount of like uh, quarter size hail. So I haven't got up there to check and see if they're still good. <laughs> <laughs> Is it seriously? Did he just give the be bench update? <laughs> yes, yes. There's nothing uh -huh. to show. I'm sorry. <laughs> So yes, I am going to be doing a video on the the solar panels. I've had a lot of people asking questions about that. So um, yeah, because it's you know if you're all hand tools, I mean it's got to be you're generating your own power. So that way my cameras and lights are actually powered by uh, yeah. Okay, that's just the. Are you kidding? You got a later. kid bicycling out there. That's yeah, just yeah. Generating power. I got all three of them on a power bike. When they go off to college, all the lights turn off. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, oh, oh. The uh, for those of you wanting to know, I do have a few of the uh, the puzzles still in stock. These are um, I, I print these off for the Christmas time. Whoa! And whoa! Ooh, let's try that in the really reflective tape on here. But so you can actually get a, a puzzle of the shop. It's kind of a fun one because you can pick up pretty much any piece and be like, oh yeah, I know where that goes. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I print one of these out with. What the uh, what the shop is in this year, and I only print a few of them, um, so there's there's only uh, um, a few of them left. So if you want one, jump on it. Um, but they're in the the Wood by Right shop. Link down below. Um, anything else going on right now? Are we going all solar? The question was asked. Um, yes, we will be fortune. generating on average all the power needed for our house. Um, it, yeah, so it'll be we're we're still connected to the grid. Um, because we're in Illinois, and so there's sometimes where we're not getting enough. Uh, we don't have a battery system on it, but uh, we'll be uh, be covering that one later. Uh, and I just defer all questions to him. <laughs> there's some things that I do, and there's some things he does, and that's not my thing. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a belying of the hand tools. I am a total tech geek. Um, so yes. <laughs> you could have just said geek. No, anyways. Um, yes, that too. They want to see the Stanley number one. It's right beside you. It's beside. Oh, this Sarah for scale. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not my Stanley number no. one. Um, no, no. <laughs> um, I tried to prank my wife with leaving it on the table, and she coming in and be like, "You bought a number one," but she didn't do that. I even tried videoing it, and it was a worthless video. <laughs> Are you calling me worthless? No, the video. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little tired when I came home from work, okay? <laughs> no, it's uh, on loan. Uh, a, uh, I'm going to be doing a few videos actually uh, fixing that one up, and we're still deciding how far we want to take the fixing on. I may end up actually doing a new Japaning on it um, mm. and, and really making it look um, not quite brand new, but really nice. It needs some work. I mean, I mean fixing up the tote on it. Um, I just got a, a knob for the front, which is missing, and there's a few other things. So that should be a, a fun video. As well as then, I might also do a video here with the number one through the number nine, with all of the intricacies in between and the quarters and the halves. Um, so that will be that'll be a fun one because I, um, I actually haven't seen. I'm sure there is a video somewhere on YouTube, but I haven't actually seen one with the number one all the way through the number five with the quarters and halves in there. So that, that's a video I've been wanting to make for years. Uh, so <laughs> finally, and it's not mine, but someday I'll have one. But. Not but it's clickbait, and that's all you care about. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, rabbit planes, moving philisters, rebate planes, um, the uh, the carriage maker planes. Uh, these are th they go by a whole bunch of different names. Um, so I want to start by talking through what are some of the definitions and differences, um, and what makes one or the other. So uh, let me 
flip over to this camera here. We are going to start with the standard, just a rabbit plane. So this is a rabbit plane or a, a carriage maker's plane or a carriage maker's rabbit plane. This is a 10 and a half. Um, so it's about the same size as a number three. Uh, actually, no, it's about, yeah, about the same size as a number three. Um, but the blade comes all the way to the outside. And so you have these cutouts here where the, the blade is out on this edge. And uh, that allows you to get right up against the side of something. Because normally with a plane, there is this lip running along the side. And you can't get right up to the edge. You can only get as close as you can with the thickness of your sidewall on there. So all of these planes in common, the one thing they have in common is that the blade comes all the way flush to the outside of the plane. No matter what it is, the blade comes to the outside of the plane. And so that's where the confusion happens because all of these planes have that same feature. But they all have several other features. So whenever someone talks about a rabbit plane, um, they're talking about something that comes all the way to the outside. Now then that brings us on to the, the term rabbit um, or rebate depending upon where you are in the world. Um, the uh, uh, people in UK say rebate, people in US say rabbit. Um, and that leads to a lot of confusions and some people think that they're two different things. And they're just two different things with, with like four different spellings. Um, and even both of those are spelled different ways. And so you may see four different spellings for the exact same word. Um, it gets very confusing, but it all goes back to a French word meaning um, what is it meaning? Like groove or direction? Something like that. What, is, what word? It's a French word. Um, the French word is um, rabat, rabat, something like that. Um, I'm totally butchering it. I'm not French anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Your uh, first clue was. But uh, yeah, it has, it has morphed over time. It, the original English was um, a rabbit and has slowly morphed into rebate. Um, but the American English stuck with the rabbit and now it's just making confusion around the world. So anytime you hear someone say rabbit, rebate, robot, um, they're all talking about the same thing. We're talking about a chunk of wood where the corner has been taken out. So you have a slice this way and a slice this way. That chunk has been taken out of the middle. And it's not, it's like half a groove right on the edge of a, uh, on the edge of a board. Um, Okay, so other types that come into it. The next thing you then have is a moving philister plane. And this gets kind of confusing because a moving philister plane is a rebate plane. Um, but it has a couple extra things on it. The moving philister also has a depth stop so that you can only go, oops, so you can only go so far down into the wood. And then it also has a fence. If a plane doesn't have those two things, then it's just generally considered a rabbit plane. If it has those two things, then it's considered a moving philister plane. Now, you can also get like the, uh, the Stanley 78, which is also, and this is the, the Miller Falls version of it, which is also a moving philister plane. It's got both the depth stop and the fence on it. Um, and a lot of them also have spurs, and these will allow you to go cross grain. Uh, this one has um, a small spur here with a wedge on it, so that spur comes out right in front of the blade. And that allows you to go across the grain. And then you have things called shoulder planes. And shoulder planes are basically rabbit planes, except for they tend to have a much lower angle of cut. But not always. Um, this, most, some people would refer to as a shoulder plane, some people would refer to it as a rabbit plane. And a shoulder plane is for doing the shoulders of tenon. So imagine my body is a big tenon sticking out of a board. You have the cheeks of the tenon and you have the shoulders of the tenon. A shoulder plane planes the shoulders of the tenon. So you're actually cutting across the ingrain. Do you know that that's finally starting to make sense after doing how many lives? Oh, the, 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 yeah, the body of it, yeah, yeah. But it, <laughs> but lots of things about planes are actually named after body parts. I know, but that's it's a strange concept for someone like me who is not <laughs> mechanically construction minded. See, this is more nurse minded though, and body profile. Yeah, but head to head, it's not then the equivalent of another object. So usually a rabbit plane hits the cheeks and a shoulder plane hits the shoulders. But I'm like, I can actually vision what you're saying, a tenon and more like, those are foreign words. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to become more fluent. <laughs> Uh, what was I going to say? 
Oh, so the lower angle on a shoulder plane allows you to cut the end grain because on the shoulder you're going to be hitting all the end grain fibers, whereas on the cheek you're actually going across the fibers. Um, so when you're doing the shoulders, it's better to have a lower angle cut. And so you're often going to have something um, like this 92. Um, and this one actually has, this one, the, the, no, the toe on it can move forward. Um, so you can open and close the mouth. And they come in all different shapes and sizes. Most of the time, these are actually bevel up. All of these other planes are beveled down. This one is bevel up, and that gives you that lower angle of cut. So you have about, about a 12 degree angle bed. Um, and then you have a 25 degree angle iron, and so you end up with a 35 degree cutting edge, as opposed to most of these being at 45 degrees. Um, so this is, oops, this one's clogged. This one is my only infill plane, and it's a piece of junk. Uh, the wedge is cut wrong, and the body is cut wrong to match the wedge. And so when the wedge is tight enough, it's actually all the way up to the front and closes it up. Um, but you'll often see like these, it's another form of the bevel up um, shoulder plane. Um, but, 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 uh, shoulder, grab it. Ah, skewed irons. So then you get into all of these that I've been showing you so far are straight irons. So they're just like a regular plane. The iron is at 90 degrees to the, the sides of the plane. But then you can get into skewed irons. And these have become fairly popular in, uh, in block planes, as you can get a skewed iron block plane. And the benefit for this is as you're running it down, that skew is going to pull it up against the fence. So if I'm running with the, with the, the board right here, it's going to suck it right up against that so that I'm not working Whoa. my way away from the cut. Um, and so the skew makes it a lot easier to keep it tight into a, into a corner. But the problem with the skew is it's incredibly difficult to keep just right because you have to keep that angle pretty much dead on in order to get a nice clean cut. Is that a super chat? Yes. Oh, Alan, what do you have to say? He says, for Sarah, nurse joke, where do you take someone who's been injured in a peekaboo accident? To the ICU. Oh. I should have seen that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, I'm hanging. Oh, it's right, we need a mom joke. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to look up as many as I normally would, so. I'm hanging. What do you call a cold hot dog? Cold dog? A chili dog. <laughs> yes, chili dog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so, um. Took you a little while to warm up to it. Oh. <laughs> There's a reason I married her. There's a very good reason out there. Somewhere. I don't know where, but it's somewhere. You're the one who asked me. <laughs> so then the next thing we come into is the side rabbit plane. This is a rabbit plane, but it is a side rabbit plane. And this is a, a very interesting one. They come, oops, they come in a couple different shapes. Um, this one is the, uh, the 78. Or 70, 79, not 78. That's the 78. This is the 79. Uh, and what this will do is it cuts the sidewall of the rabbit as opposed to the bottom. So if I'm cutting this rabbit in here, the, the rabbit plane cuts out the bottom face. This can then come in and cut out the sidewall of the rabbit and make it slightly wider. So if you didn't get it exactly where you want, you can come in with this and clean it up. And this allows you to adjust the depth of cut and the, the toe coming down. I can actually move the... Uh, the toe of the plane in and out. And if it's full and has everything, it also comes with the fence on there. Um, the, most of them are missing the fence on them. And they come in a couple different types. You can also get the Stanley uh, 98 and 99, which basically take this and split it into two different planes. Uh, so you can have one that goes one way and another one that goes the other way. This one is really nice because it can do both. Um, I can go both directions. So if the grain is chattering one direction, then I can put this one in the other direction. So that's, that's a very, very quick overview of the different types, and, and there are other ones out there I could talk on, um, but this will give you a, a general idea. I want to go into some of the setup and use on these in a minute, um, but are there any particular questions that I should hit right now? Uh, I mean, I have questions. I don't know where they fall in line with... Why don't you throw in at me, because i got to set this up. Okay. Let's see. Tom West asks, 
How often do you use the carriage makers rabbit plane? I saw one on Amazon for 60 bucks and was thinking about getting it. Do you think it's worth it? Nope. <laughs> uh, carriage makers rabbit plane. Um, if you do a lot of large tenons, this is very useful. If you are going to be doing very large rabbits, this is very useful. So if you're doing timber framing and things like that, it's a good plane to have. Um, although if you're doing timber framing, you're probably gonna want a jackrabbit. Um, a jack ra jackrabbit is, um, well, it's a jack plane that's a rabbit plane. Jackrabbit, that's kind of cool, I like that one. Um, but it's, it's the same length as the number five, but with the rabbiting on it. That makes it very easy for doing um, some of the big timber framing items. Um, I, I actually have never used this one in a project. Since I've gotten it, I haven't done any tenons big enough for it. Um, yeah, even the ones on Sarah's bench aren't going to be big enough for this one because they're going across it. So, yeah, don't need them very much. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those things then, it also has to be set up. Um, so, if you keep it set up and keep it running well, then it will be very beneficial to you because you can just pick it up and use it. Um, but if it needs to be set up, then you're running into the time thing of, well, is the setup time going to cause you more than it's worth? Um, so let's actually talk about some of the use of a rabbit plane. Now, let me show you. This is the first one that I ever got, and this is actually one that has been modified um, very, very heavily. And uh, I actually, I, I kind of like this one occasionally because it has that little bull nose on there. It's small, it's comfortable. Um, he actually had tapped two Ooh. holes in here. You can put a fence on it. Um, but, uh, well, actually, let me just show you this one. So what you want to do is you want to hold it here and then you want a couple fingers underneath. And traditionally, it was done without a fence. And you use your fingers as the fence so they can slide along. And those will hold you at your depth. Except for my iron, not to depth. I'm just taking really fine shavings. Really, really fine shavings. Uh, is that a super chase on? Yes, I was waiting for you to notice. I'll take a breath. <laughs> Tom says, thanks King James Knight of the White Oak. <laughs> thanks, Sir Tom. Are right, you ready? What's that? These are all like kindergarten jokes, just so you know, because it's all I could find this week. What do you call a sleeping bull? What? A bulldozer. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> so, here I've taken off the fence and put the depth stop up. So what I want to do is I want to put my fingers on here and I'm going to start it, and I'm going to let it slide on my fingers and use my finger as a fence. And once you get one or two passes in, then you'll get this ledge that you can put it up against. And you won't need the fence because you'll have that ledge in place, and you can very quickly get a shoulder going. And so a lot of the old timers um, used to not have fences on them, and that's why you find a lot of these that are missing the fence and depth stop because it's just quicker and easier to grab it and set it up like that. But if you're the type of person who likes to do full setups, then you can put a fence on there. And these, you have to loosen this up. It comes with a rod. Screw that rod on. All the way down. And then you have the fence that can slide down. And you can set that to whatever measurement you want to do. And now that that's on there, then you don't have your fingers on here and it's just, it's always like, well, how do I hold it now? Because I still want to hold it like that. And now you're just always pushing it up against the fence. You want to make sure the work is all the way up against that fence. So that fence is riding on the side. Because that's the problem with most shoulder planes is that they want to work out and away and you start getting all of these stepped shoulders. But if you have a skewed rabbit, and this one needs to be set up a bit more. Okay, so do I get to... Sure. To, to do a couple of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to try one? Well, just, yeah. Let me, let me just finish this up first. Okay. You always make it look so easy, and then I come and so with this screw one, it up. <laughs> with the skewed iron, you got to do a little bit more. Well, that was a bit too much. <laughs> Let's see if I can back it up. There it goes. 
see what that feels like. That's a little better. And it's still a little heavy. Back that one up one more. This is one that I made a while ago. This is a collaboration with um, um, Bearcat, Bearcat Woodworking. Wow. I'm going to pull the wedge out. That one is having fun. Okay, not getting anything. Light tap. Light tap. Yes, I'm using a metal hammer on a metal wedge. There we go. Need a little more. Let's come all the way back. And so with the with the with the uh, skewed iron, it wants to pull it up against the up against the shoulder, nice and tight. And it makes it much easier to keep it in place. There we go. Now we're getting lines. Oh, I love those happy little curls. And so a skewed shoulder, a skewed plane is very, very easy to keep it tight, to keep this edge nice and crisp. The problem with it is if you're starting with your fingers, it's hard because it wants to pull over farther. So it's harder to get that starting shoulder in there. The other problem that you're often going to be running into with them is that the plane starts to tip and the more it tips you start to get this shelf being at an angle. And so you always have to be thinking about keeping it vertical. No matter what you're doing, you're always want, your, your body is always wanting to lean it away from, and you always have to be thinking about keeping it upright. Even if you have a fence, you still need to be thinking about keeping it upright because of the fence, you can still start to let it slide. And with this one, actually let it drip a little bit. So, do you want to try? Of course I want to try. All right. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. It's actually warm in your shop, so if I can do this without... What's that? I said it's actually warm down here. I'll let you try it up in your armpits. <laughs> that doesn't sound weird at all. Okay, so I was obviously not really paying attention because right. I was paying so attention here, to the chat. So, why don't you come over here? So, right hand behind, point your finger forward just like a normal grip for a saw or a plane. Then fingers go underneath. Be careful of the iron, don't put your finger into the iron. And so with the fence on here, you're just there's, there's really no good way to grab it. So I'm always like grabbing it up like this. And then do your cut. Try to keep it as vertical as possible. Maybe I should get yeah, on my stool. Have a couple fingers in front of the iron as well. I'm just trying to get steady. I'm on my <laughs> tippy toes right this second. Thank you very much. We really got to finish that bench. Like this? No. Yep. Yeah? Oh, you make it look a lot easier. Oh, I'm also on my tippy toes. <laughs> Ta-da! Like that? Yep. Except for at the end, you're starting to tip and leaning away from it. So you want to try and keep it more vertical. I'd like to see it's, you it's do, do a if, twinkle if you're doing toes. it up here. <laughs> <laughs> what about the other one that you were using? Um, oh, this that one? one? Yeah. Okay. Give the wooden body. So same thing with this. Except we want to have a couple fingers underneath. We put your front up on top. So grab the whole thing like that. It's like this? Yeah. And your fingers then slide on the edge. This one feels very different. Yeah. Is it not going to... Oh, there, it's cutting a little something. Okay, I don't like that one. I like that one better. <laughs> you don't like the one I made? Well, at least I feel like I'm cutting with that one. That one just feels... Well, that's because there's, there's an angle to it, so it's, it's starting on a, uh, um, a facet. 
Yeah, but I think because I like the weight of that one, that one just, yeah. I feel like it's... The wooden plane is much lighter. Uh, let's see. I like a little gravity in the situation. <laughs> Let me show you the, the fun of a shoulder Holy plane. macaroni, I gotta catch up on this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you get to know it feels like you have other people talk behind your back. <laughs> Here, we switch this around. And the shoulder plane then allows you to do end grain fun. Um, so you can do the shoulder of a tenon. One of these days I'll teach the kids how to be a cameraman. Uh, so with the shoulder plane, you're doing the exact same thing. If you don't have a shoulder right up against, you just put your finger underneath. This one's a pretty heavy cut. We're going to blow out the end because we're not stopping there. You can see how we're getting that rabbit, but then on the end grain, because it's such a low angle, it can slide right through it. Now that I have it established, I can go to town, cutting that rabbit into the end grain. That's just so much fun. I love that. Um, so that's what a, a shoulder plane excels at. Um, let's see. Oh, then we got the side rabbit plane. And with the side rabbit plane, you got to crank the vise down a bit more. Bring this over here. With the side rabbit plane, you can put it on here, and I'm actually going to take material off of this side with it. And I can let that ride along. And this blade is sticking down here, slicing right out the side of it. And so if you have a groove that you need to be ever so slightly wider, this is the plane you want. This will make grooves wider. It'll make rabbits wider. It doesn't take off much, but it'll allow you to sneak up on it and detail in that shoulder. Or the, uh, well, the shoulder of the rabbit or the groove. Um, so what, what questions do we have right now? Oh, I'm not showing you. Oh, sorry. I thought I was on this camera. So here, you can see you have the iron sticking out on the side there. And on this one, I'm going to be holding it in tight here. So I want to be pushing it up against the side. And get these curls like that. Allows you to do the side of the rabbit. Thus, side rabbit plane. But the nice thing about this is it has a blade going both ways. So in this case, the grain is going that way. If I try and turn around and go this way, I'm going to catch into the grain, and it's already starting to chip out. I'm getting tear out on there. Okay, so Not did to mention you these are actually a little bit dull. Already say when you would use these kind of planes. Because, you know, I get distracted by the chat. Yeah, uh, well, I, I kind of hit on them. But to kind of overview that... I'm sure we've had new people join. They're all <laughs> rabbit planes. Um, so they will all do rabbits. And really, you don't need anything special. Just a simple but, rabbit okay. plane where the iron goes all the other side. Back it up a step. Okay. A rabbit is just a groove, correct? A rabbit is half of a groove. So it's a groove, but rather than being right so down the middle of the board... So is that what you would use for like a box if you were having a sliding thing in and out? No, that's a groove. Oh. Um, so if I have the board, and I have a groove going down the board, yeah. a slot in it, Yeah. a rabbit is half that. So it's a groove that's right on the edge and doesn't so have the other side. So what would you use it in building? Um, if you're doing a, a corner where you want to house another board into ah. that, um, it gives you a better gluing surface. Uh, rather than just so being one edge, you have two edges against it. Um, so is it like a cutout miter joint kind of a Kind of. It's thing? this edge right here where... Sorry, I'm really trying to visualize this. Where the, the corner of the board is check, check. Gotcha. That's, that's a rabbit or rebate. Whereas on this, that's a groove. See, it's, it's so a is groove that's like on the edge of the board. So like a molding kind of a thingy? Um, it can be part of molding. Um, it can okay. be one of the the steps in it. Uh, it's, it's one of those things where it just has a bunch of different odd uses. Um, if you're doing corners and you're wanting to glue them together rather than just butting two boards up and gluing it, putting a rabbit where one of them kind of sinks into the other one a little ways gives you a better gluing surface. Um, Got it. So it's a stability thing. Stability thing, gluing surface. Um, it's also if you want something to slide in and stop. So if you're putting the bottom on a box and you want to slide in, 
And rather than just slide in free flow, you want to slide in and have a registered stop. You'd have a rabbit running around the inside of the box that the, that the bottom goes into. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's there's a there's a bunch of odd places for that. Um, the back of a drawer bottom. Um, so if you want to be able to make the the, the drawer um, the the bottom slide in and out. Um, I'm trying to think of other things that I've had it on. Um, Oh, drawer slides. So if you're capturing the bottom corner of a drawer and you want that drawer to slide in and out, it's sliding in a rabbit. So there's a rabbit on both sides that the drawer oh, slides okay. on. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so there's, there's there's a whole bunch of different places that rabbits tend to pop up in. Sorry to everybody uh, in. And watching. if you imagine a tenon, <laughs> a tenon is basically a board with rabbits on the end of it. So I'm kind of envisioning myself on the end of a board. You have the tenon sticking up. You are bored. The cheeks, the shoulders. Um, so that's basically a rabbit in the end of a board. Um, and so that's where a shoulder plane works really well with that low angle on it because it'll do the end grain. Whereas a normal rabbit plane has a higher angle and would have a hard time with cutting the end grain on the shoulder. It's great for doing the cheeks though. That's how I, uh, that's how I shave. <laughs> um, and then you have your side rabbit, which does the side of the rabbit because all the other rabbits do the bottom of the rabbit. And then this one does the side of the rabbit. So I mean, if, if it's a rabbit, you could actually take a rabbit plane and turn it 90 degrees and use the rabbit plane to do the side of it. Um, but with a side rabbit plane, you can actually get down into a groove and you can put that down in the groove and make the groove wider. You can't get a rabbit plane down in there to make the groove wider. Um, so it's, that's where its benefit comes in. So what questions we got? I think it's just the excuse for more tools. But no well, it's always the excuse for more tools. <laughs> what do we got? Oh, children Thunder tripping. upstairs. I'm trying to catch up on the chat. Uh, let me just ask a question. Uh, if you answered this, I'm sorry. Uh, Brian Fulmer asked, do those bevel up shoulder planes take different size cuts slash thickness? Um, rabbit planes come in all different widths and thicknesses. Um, it, like the, the Stanley uh, 78, um, they actually, Stanley makes several planes that are obviously identical to this, but are different thicknesses. And so each one will be able to do a wider and wider um, rabbit. Um, so if I really want to, my uh, carriage maker's rabbit plane, this will do up to a two inch wide. Actually, I think it's two and an eighth. Two, two and an eighth, two inches. It's more than two inches. It's two and an eighth. Yes, two and an eighth. Um, so this could do up to two and an eighth inch wide rabbit, um, whereas this little shoulder plane is three quarter inch wide, so it can't do anything more than three quarter inch wide. So depending upon the plane that you have is how wide of a cut you can take. Um, bevel down is just the standard plane, and for any time you're doing something uh, with or across the board, bevel down works fantastically. Um, but if you're going it to the end grain, you can do it with a bevel down, um, but it just ends up being a little bit more difficult. I bevel up. Low angle is a little bit more convenient for that. And that's where the, uh, the most shoulder planes are actually a good bit more expensive. Uh, they're harder to find. and Well, they're not harder to find. They're just more expensive. What's next? Okay. Ooh, she's trying to catch up. Good luck. They're very talkative tonight, which is good. good. <laughs> we have lots of... This look like a good group. We tonight. have we have a good mix of new, so welcome, welcome, and those who may not have been able to join us for a while, and then most of our regulars. So we've got a good mesh. Um, question. Let's see. Nick Salas, what did he ask? If you can have only one, would you get the Lee Nelson Rabbit Block Plane over the regular one, and does it still work for no normal cuts? Um, yeah, the, the rabbiting block plane is kind of a nice all-around plane it, because you can still use it as a regular block plane, um, but you can use it as a rabbiting plane as well. It's a little bit more cumbersome if you're trying to do corners, um, and so generally for most rabbiting work, the most um, universal and easiest to use is one that's shaped after a 78. Um, this is one that can do just about all rabbits and because it has the fins and depth stop, it's easy to learn, it's easy to work with. Um, and so usually this is going to be the most universal flexible style, um, but to get a rabbited block plane, 
Um, it is very useful because you can do what the block plane does and you can do what the rabbiting plane does. It's not quite as good at general rabbiting just because it's a little bit more cumbersome to hold, um, but it does work very well. And a lot of the block planes, um, I don't think the Lee Nielsen does, um, but Veritas does, and there's several others that actually come with um, threaded holes so you can put a fence onto them as well. And so you can do um, fenced work with a rabbited block plane. Um, yeah. But if, if you were to get one, it would either be a rabbited block plane or a 78. Either of those will, will really get you into doing most anything. I mean, if you really want to, um, the only thing that this is limited to is the width of cut. This will do all your rabbits up to the width that you get. And if you set it up and sharpen it well, this can even do shoulders and, and do them fairly well too. So what's next? Um, let's see, Ooh, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, Lanye? I have no idea. Probably better than I would. Uh, why do most skew irons face left? Uh, because most people are right-handed. And the reason being is that if you're right-handed, you're planing this way, and so you want to suck it into the board that's away from you. Um, as if you're left-handed, um, you're going to be going this way, and the skew is going to want to pull it towards you away from the, the shoulder you're trying to make. Um, so most of them are right-handed, and that's to have the, the skew angle pushing away from you. Um, however, they do make left-handed skewed irons. They're not as common, um, but they are out there. Um, just uh, if you are left-handed, you'll probably want to get them. Otherwise, you can turn it around and just go the other way which is always good to be able to learn to pull a plane rather than push it. What's next? Besides listening to the kids Sorry. That scream upstairs. Sorry, I was trying not to belch on you. <laughs> you got microphone control. Speaking of microphones, we're getting a little bit of static feedback, by the way. I don't know. Are they saying that? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to... I'm just it might be one you. of our cables is going bad. Stop. Okay. Jose Perez, what did he say? When is he going to use his pole lathe? Oh, the pole lathe? Yeah. Oh, the pole lathe and the pieces over there, I have quite a few videos of using it. Uh, the problem with it is it takes up a lot of shop space, um, and so I, I don't use it that much. If I need to do lathe work, I have my Barnes number five I'm going to use, um, and that just is a lot easier because it takes up a lot less space and it's a little more functional. Uh, but I'm hoping next year to actually do some outdoor woodworking. Um, and I'll actually have a spring pole lathe out there. But I do have quite a few videos Ooh. with the, the pole lathe if you want to see those. I actually have a bowl turning on the pole lathe, which was very fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that a super chat? John Juggler. Thank you, man. Yeah, thanks for coming back. Okay, hang on. Ready? Yep, ready. What's the difference between a hippo and a zippo. What? One is really heavy and one is a little lighter. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, John. <laughs> What's the difference between opium and uh, and um, Moses? Abraham. Get Abraham. the joke right. <laughs> <laughs> Opium and Abraham. Yeah, the other one. <laughs> Opium is the juice of poppies, and Abraham is the poppy of the Jews. <laughs> There's a reason that she tells the jokes. And <laughs> I stand here and look pretty. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. <laughs> What's the next question we got? <laughs> All right. Um, Okay, so some of these questions talk about certain number planes. Are rabbit planes like in the 70s? Um, well, no, they, they're they all different numbers. Um, this one is the 78. This one is the 10 and a half. Okay, but what I'm saying is is that, like if I say is a 79 worth buying, that's related to this. Yeah, thing. yeah, 79 okay. is very similar to the 78. I don't know the, the numbers. The um, give me IV gauges, give yeah. me... NG2 and if you get it without the fence and the depth stop, they're they're very very cheap. You can usually pick them up for around twenty to thirty bucks. Um, you get one with a good bit of rust that needs to be worked on. You might get as low as fifteen. Um, and uh, if you have them with the fence and depth stop, then the price goes up. 
because sometimes you, the fence often costs more than the whole rest of the plane because they tend to get lost. But as in numbering, uh, this is 78, you have the 92, um, you have the, I don't know, what was the number on this one? The 192, the 10, um, they're all over the place. What's next? Okay, so Tom, related to the 79, so Tom West asks, is a 79 worth buying? I've seen a bunch for sale, but they aren't cheap. Um, yeah, the 79 is, is pretty similar. If I remember correctly, the 79 is just a thinner version of the 78. Um, so it can't do quite as wide, but it's still a great one. Although I could be wrong. I'm really not good with my Stanley numbers. I usually have to look at them and say, 192. <laughs> What's next? Let's see, what did Dan Sackett ask? Do you use a shoulder plane often? I saw Shannon Rogers' video recently with his opinion on them and he hardly uses them. I do not use it much at all. Um, if you are good at sawing, you've gotten good at it, and you can saw to the line and have it nice and clean, then you rarely have shoulders that need to be cleaned up. Um, it, is, it, it is very, very rare that I have a tendon that has a shoulder that needs to be cleaned up. And if I do, it's usually a little bit faster just to grab a chisel and touch up that one. Um, and so it's, it's, not one, it's not one that I use that much. Um, I'm trying to think. I think I've only actually used this one once in a project. I've used it in a lot of videos, showing it off um, and trying to show description of them, but actual function. I generally, don't use a shoulder plane that much. Uh, now that being said, if you are a power tool user, um, these have a lot of use um, because they are great for touching things up and making them just a little bit bigger. So if you get close to it with the power saw, then this will give you those couple extra shavings and really be allow you to sneak up on it. Um, so a lot of hand tool hybrid people um, love shoulder planes. Most people who are just hand tools don't use them that much. What's next? Okay, so we have two super chats. Oh, super chats. So Fiber Inspector said, please close caption your uh, podcast for us old woodworkers. Um, I can't close the option the live ones. I can't turn it on. There's an option. There's a toggle. There's a I don't know if I can now that we're live. I don't know. I, I, I don't know that it would do that because it's live. Um, although I've never played with that. Maybe that's something. We a new will there. investigate. So well, I'll look at it. Thanks, man. All right. And then we also have another super chat from Bridget Anderson Atkins. And the question is, what would be a good size chisel to make a poor man's rabbit? Uh, it depends on what, what size rabbit you want to make. If you want to make a half inch rabbit, then you need at least a half inch chisel. Um, so whatever you have. Um, and she's referring to, Bridget, right? Yeah, yeah. she's mm -hmm. referring to um, a video that Paul Sellers did a while ago with the poor man's rabbit plane, which is a, a great video. It's a way that, it, if you can do that, you can make any molding plane. Um, with that series. Um, it's the very same way that I make uh, my grooving planes and tongue, uh, tonguing planes. Is it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great way to do it. But yeah, it's, it's designed just to stick a chisel in it and, and go at it. But you, whatever size rabbit you want, you need to make a, a wider chisel. Than that, so. Great question. Okay, then we got one more super chat. One more. Woo. Hey, Dan. And Dan says, thanks again for reminding me I don't need an expensive shoulder plane. <laughs> Is your wife watching with you? That was a lot of assumptions in that last sentence. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Dan. Well, why don't you give me a, a question while you look up mom jokes? I Are have you ready one. for it? Okay, good. I have one. She's awesome. I do bring the awesome. Did JJ not tell you this? <laughs> I bring the awesome in the house. All right, ready? Yep. What do we get when a chicken lays its eggs on the top of a hill? What? Egg rolls. <laughs> I like it. That's a good one. <laughs> you got a uh, question then? I have lots of questions. We have lots of questions tonight. Cool. Uh, let's see. Whose are we on? Uh, Theolith Theolithic 71 said, I have a Stanley 78 and the fence isn't square to the sole. How would you recommend I fix this? Um, the fence doesn't have to be square to the sole. Um, it just has to be 
at the point where it touches. I mean, you really only need that one tiny point of contact. Um, so let me move this camera up and take a closer look at this. Focus on this, switch cameras. Um, so what you end up with, grab my square here, is, is that correct? And it really doesn't matter because it's such a small surface that if the if the fence isn't isn't dead on, the only thing, the only point that really matters is that that inside point that touches, because it doesn't matter. A, the the fence will not determine the angle of the cut because it's such a small thin surface. Um, pushing that against won't force it one way or the other. Your hand grabbing it back here will allow it to twist one way or the other. So this hand is what will keep your cut running perfectly up and down. The fence being slightly out of square with the sole um, really isn't that big a deal. Um, most of the time, I mean, I can think of a few instances where it might be. Um, the other way that you can fix that um, is either you could bend the rod one way or the other, um, or you could grind down or sand down this fence to match it. And there really isn't a whole lot of material there, so it wouldn't take that long to, uh, to shape the fence to match it. Yeah, um, the other thing that a lot of people worry about is the fence um, being out of square this way and, and actually parallel with the, uh, with the sole. And this one actually is not parallel. It's actually back at a bit of an angle. Um, but it does have a good bit of flex to it. So that is, is not as, as important. Um, actually, I've seen a few of them where they've been cut down to something small like this. So there's only a, a small point of, of sole contact. Because once you make a, a couple passes, the, the fence is only needed for the first three or four passes. After that, then you have a shoulder that you're riding up against. And that shoulder um, will be just riding up the side, of, the side of the plane. So you can get rid of the fence after that. Um, so that's really the only, the only purpose for the, uh, for the fence. What next question we got? Hmm. Let's see. KJ's me asks, is the cross grain rabbit itself as in the cut not the plane called a philister and what is a carcass um is the you gotta read that one again okay. <laughs> is the cross grain rabbit itself as in the cut called the philister no what is it All right uh, a moving philister we, we touched on this earlier a moving philister is a rabbit plane that has a depth stop and a fence um, if it doesn't have the depth stop in the fence, it's just a rabbit plane. But if the rabbit plane has a depth stop in the fence, then it's called a moving philister plane. Um, the actual way it's used doesn't make any difference whether you're going across the grain or with the grain. Um, the most moving philisters also have a spur, so you can cut across the grain. Um, but that is not a necessary. Um, I actually know, uh, not the ten and a half, but several standard rabbit planes that don't have a fence still have the spur. Uh, not the ten and a half, but I can't remember which one it was. Um, so you can have a rabbit plane that's not a moving philister that has a spur to go across the grain, if that makes sense. <laughs> it's one of these times where there's, there's a whole bunch of names and the names really don't mean anything. Um, it's just another way that woodworkers get to confuse people getting into the sport. Is that <laughs> where woodworking meets Shakespeare? Yes, something like that. <laughs> What's next? Well, did you answer what a, car a carcass is then? Um, a carcass is the frame of a piece of furniture. So if I was making a chest of drawers, it's the chest without the side panels, without the drawers. It's just the, the structure of the chest. Um, that is the carcass. And so if you have a carcass saw, that is the saw that does most of the cutting to make the carcass. Unless you're talking about dead animals, then that's something completely different. I had to. I had to. It's part of my contract. <laughs> <laughs> what's next? I won't tell you what's in my contract. Nothing. Uh, let's see. What did Alex have to say? Any tips setting up the blade on a Stanley 78? Does it have to be flush with the side or a bit up? Mm, yeah, I didn't mention that. Um, one of the problems that, that people then have is should the plane be, should the iron be perfectly flush with the outside or should it stick out just a little bit? 
And some people will tell you that the iron needs to stick out just a hair, you know, just a, a few thousandths. And some people say, no, it needs to be perfectly flush with the side. Um, so when I'm setting it up, let me show you what I'll do, is I'll flip back over to this camera. So my iron is loose in here. I'm going to set the plane on its side. I'm going to push the iron down. And I'm going to push the, the sole down so it's perfectly flush. And then I'm going to lock it down in place. And this way I know that my iron is perfectly flush with the outside. And I'm going to use it like that. And if I find that I'm moving away from the shoulder, I might come over here and just give it a little tap and allow it to stick out just a little bit more. The problem with making it stick out is you might end up starting to eat into your, into your shoulder and start moving over to the side farther. Um, so if it sticks out too far, you, you run the risk of widening your, uh, your rabbit. Um, but if it doesn't stick out far enough, then you're moving away from your shoulder and you get this sloped edge. And so there really isn't a perfect place for it. I try and keep it perfectly flush with the edge, but if I find that I'm moving away, then I tap it over and make it stick out just a little bit more. Um, so it's one of those things you gotta, you, you gotta play with, but that's, that's my treatise on it. And a lot of people are going to tell you one way or the other, and it's really not one way or the other, it's just there's different situations for each one having the iron slightly in or out. Um, I always start with it flush with the side, and then play with it if it needs to be played with. What's next? Um, let's see, what did Brian Fulmer ask? Can you mount the Stanley 386 to any of these planes? 386. I have no idea. Oh, oh, the fence. Um, yes. Yeah, you can. Um, well, I don't know if this one is. Uh, it's, I can't take it down right now. Uh, no, it's not long enough for the 10 and a half. Um, so it won't fit on the 10 and a half, but I know it will fit on a jackrabbit. Why are we um, a jackrabbit okay. is a number five that has a rabbit inside. So, yeah. What's wrong? It's like spinning. Yeah, I don't know. Keep going. Let's see what pops up. You got another question? Let's see. I do. Oh, there it finally caught up. <laughs> um, Alan Smith, what do you say? Will James have another wood plane build project coming up? Wood plane build project. As in building another wooden plane? I have a few others that I would like to make. Um, I don't have any on the list right now as my current build list is a bit long, um, but I do want to make others. I would like to actually make another detailed smoother um, and do another one with a, uh, I, what, I, what I want to do is one with a, a lignum vitae sole. Well, okay, if I can get my hands on a big enough piece of, um, of boxwood, I want to do a, a coffin smoother with a boxwood sole and dovetailed into a white oak base. Um, I think that would be absolutely cool um, and actually make my own iron and, uh, um, and wedge for it. So yeah, that, that one, I, I want to do that one sometime, but I, it's not on the list right now. But I do have a few other that I would like to do. Um, I'll probably do um, a couple other like molding plane type um, builds in the future. I might make another tongue and groove set um, but those will be down the road a little ways. So, yeah, coming up someday. <laughs> What's next? Let's see. I'm very distracted by the noises from upstairs <laughs> right now. What did Jose say? Is it possible to make rabbits with just the chisel? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, actually, if if I'm doing um, if I'm just doing one rabbit, usually what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my tenon saw. And the nice thing about rabbit is it's just two saw cuts. You cut your cheek. And then you cut your shoulder, and you got this piece that comes out, and you got a rabbit. So really, all you need is the saw. But if I'm doing a lot of them, or I'm doing many long ones, then it's a lot faster to have a rabbit plane. Um, and so if you have just a chisel, um, well, it's all, it's almost always faster to do it with the saw than it is with a chisel, because usually what you're going to end up doing is, um, you, yeah, I actually have a video showing that. I, I did a live year and a half or so ago where I did like four different methods of creating a rabbit um, and one of them was just using a chisel um, and you can do that it takes a lot more skill and a lot more difficult but it's very possible um, usually it's faster to saw and saw and, and be done or at least saw one side and then chisel out the remainder um, but uh, yeah you can do it with just a chisel is that another super chat it is Tom Thanks, said Sir Tom. 
Nights Run Fest. Can we set up a hangout? Um, a hangout or after COVID, a face-to-face -face meet for the Knights of the White Oak and Patreon. Yes, 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 yes. Um, uh, well, I, I do um, patrons um, and, and members, I do a regular um, hangout. Actually, I have one coming up next week um, with the, uh, the higher end patrons, but I do one every three months, um, quarterly. I do one with all patrons and members. Um, one of these days I need to set up a little later so you can be there for it. Um, but once, once COVID is over, I want to do an actual meetup. Uh, whenever I travel, I try and do meetups in different places. But uh, this year, it's been somewhat limited. We've got lots of parks by us. We could, we could do something. Could. I've been thinking about doing a, a cookout and then have a pile of my scrap wood and uh, call it the, uh, the come, save James, come Save Wood from James's Fire. What's next? <laughs> a mom joke. Oh, yes. Sir Tom needs a mom joke. It's more of a riddle this time. I hope you don't mind. What starts with an E, ends with an E, and has only one letter in it? E? No. What? Envelope. Oh. <laughs> yes, envelope. And apparently Brian... Brian Fulmer, yes, is now the sheriff. So apparently Alan Smith is the OG first night. And <laughs> no, is it Brian or Poorman? Wait, did I get it wrong? <laughs> Which one is the sheriff? <laughs> Brian, okay. Nice hierarchy. So, you I, know, we, we got to make, get it all figured. So you, I need you to know, make a round a, uh, side table so that we can have a night's around the table. <gasps> What's the next question? We got enough time for Southern one or two barbecue more. in that cookout. Very serious. You bring the barbecue, we will eat it. <laughs> if you build it, they will come. Applies to woodworking nights at the White Oak too. Um, How many more questions do we have on the list? One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, pick two. <gasps> if we don't get to them, send me an email and I'll try. Okay, to I'm trying to think who's done super chats. I know Tom has. Okay. So, Tom asked, how old is that beautiful infill you have there? Um, <laughs> this one uh, isn't that old. Uh, it's actually, it, it, this one was made from a kit um, by someone out there. I have no idea who. And I bought it in Pennsylvania. Um, and whoever made the kit really had no idea what they were doing. And it is a very, very poorly made kit. It doesn't work. It doesn't function. And it's been one of these projects that one of these days I want to redo it and actually make it work. Um, but uh, I haven't gotten around to it. So yeah, it's, I have it out here because it's, it's the only infill plane that I have, but it's, it's really a bad, bad one. So, yeah. Hey, Tom, thank you one more, man. Okay. Yeah, no, I am. Uh, <laughs> Round table shirt names and ranks. <laughs> Now, I'm thinking about doing a, uh, uh, a hive mind group on Discord or Discourse. I'm thinking Discord because the, the bot control on there is a little bit better. Um, and on there, then you can actually give people ranks and titles and things of that nature. So um, we might be doing something like that. I think it would almost be cooler if we just did Knights of the White Oaks, White Oaks and they all picked what their sir or lord or lady or oh, whatever. I think it would be cool if you all just picked your own names. <laughs> and then we try to guess. <laughs> and then we try to guess. I think that would be awesome. Who is who? One more question and we'll wrap this up. Okay. What we on. got? I don't remember who all super chatted. I want to make sure I got people who super chatted. One second. <laughs> One second. Now, and for those of you worrying about it, we will keep both Facebook and whatever I decide to do with the other one. I just want to have something that's a lot okay. more organized than Facebook because Facebook is just like a stream of thoughts and it, once it's posted, it disappears. And um, I want to have a better place so that people can post up their projects and what they're working on and, and share more ideas. Um, so we'll see how that goes in the future. Okay, I'm just going to go with the next question because that's the way I'm going to do it. Mr. Q, what did he ask? Uh, so would the side rabbit plane work on cleaning up the side if you get that step-down issue like an inconsistent fence? If you have a rabbit, 
it's actually faster to then take the rabbit plane and turn it on its side and clean it up with the rabbit plane. Um, the side rabbit plane doesn't work as well with the step down cuts. It gets a little bit wobbly if there isn't a solid wall for it to grab onto. Um, however, taking a rabbit plane and turning it on its side will clean it up very quickly. Um, so usually that's what I'll use to clean up any fuzz or any steps that are coming down the side. Um, usually the side rabbit plane is more or less for just increasing its size. If you have a nice edge there, it can, it can hold up against that edge and clean it up. Um, but yes, if you are careful, you can clean up that step with the side rabbit plane. It's just not quite as easy with that one. So. Cool. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, it seems like we've had a pretty good group on here. If you have any ideas for lives that you would like to have, um, let me know. That I, I usually pick them from questions that I'm currently getting or someone who has a, something that's really hard to answer on an email. Hey, you may actually get an entire live, and this one was dedicated to... It was actually a question on one of the Facebook groups. Um, and it wasn't one of mine. It was another, another group where someone put up a question. I was like, you know, that would make a really good live. And so I put this one together. So um, I think I'll do it for next time. For this time, we'll have another next time, <laughs> which is Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Time, and uh, we're here every week. So that will be the Q&A next week? Uh, yeah, next week is a big Q&A. So if I didn't get to your question, come back next week, and we will be answering questions um, all night long, or at least an hour. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Or Some of I us have to go to work the next. Cool. Yeah. Well, I think that'll about do it. So uh, until next time. Have a wonderful day.